The Scopes trial was a news event that drew hundreds of reporters and nearly 2 million words in publication. As a test case, it became the reference for similar cases in seven states and took the emphasis off of evolution in high school textbooks up into the 1960s. John T. Scopes was accused of teaching evolution in Dayton, Tennessee. The 1925 case would be tried in the Rhea County Courthouse and became known as the Scopes Monkey Trial. It stands as one of the most famous trials in U.S. history. What's interesting about the case is not so much the case itself, the teaching of evolution in public schools. What's most interesting is the story behind this high-profile test trial. From famous attorneys to staged conflicts and fights to hopes that the trial would be a huge boost to the local economy. It was anything but your run-of-the-mill trial. The early players, George Raplea, was a metallurgical engineer. Uh, F.E. Robinson, the local druggist. John T. Scopes, our teacher. Walter White, superintendent of schools. William J. Bryan, the lead prosecuting attorney, also a three-time presidential candidate and former secretary of state. Clarence Darrow, the lead attorney for the defense, was an expensive New York divorce lawyer. The setup to this uh, starts out with May 4th, where Raplea sees the ACLU ad uh, offering to pay for the expenses of a teacher willing to participate in a test of the new Tennessee anti-evolution law. The following day, officially the beginning of the case, after a supposedly chance meeting in Robinson's drugstore, of town officials, lawyers, Raplea, uh, White, and Scopes, who was willing to play the part of the criminal, was eventually served with a warrant after the meeting. May 18th and 19th, uh, Chattanooga leaders tried to move the trial to the Chattanooga Memorial Auditorium, expecting a huge public and media presence. Of course, their plan failed, and the case remained. The Dayton entrepreneurs called the Scopes home from Kentucky for a special grand jury um, ahead of the August start date for the trial itself. What they were trying to do was hold the attention of the media. This planned grand jury included uh, staged speeches along with a staged fight and scripted banter between parties, resulting in the monkey trial moniker. After meetings between the Dayton entrepreneurs, the ACLU cast of influential characters, uh, all the attorneys and interested parties with the ACLU, the trial was already a smash media hit and hadn't even started yet. One of the reasons for the test case in the first place was the possibility of a constitutional amendment banning the teaching of evolution in tax-supported schools. July 10th, 1925, the trial proceedings actually began. From the very beginning, it was a very strange trial with many oddities. Uh, some of the jurors were just there to get a good seat at the trial, which was funny because on uh, numerous occasions the jury was excluded from the proceedings due to the lengthy and technical nature. Some of the principals, Darrow, uh, Malone, and Scopes, all had prior connections to each other. Uh, some just, to ca some, uh, just meet chance meetings, but they all were aware of each other. And hundreds of scientific experts had been brought in for testimony, yet none of them were accepted as evidence. The chief counsel for the defense, Darrow, was cited for contempt of court. And the lead for the prosecution, Brian, 
actually took the stand. The accused himself, however, never took the stand. And the judge cut the proceeding short because of threats to both the prosecution and defense attorneys' lives. Maybe the strangest of all was the defense did not proclaim their client's innocence. In fact, at the end of the trial, they asked the jury to return a guilty verdict. Ultimately, the case would, he would be found guilty and it would be appealed and go through uh, multiple appeals. And just before reaching the Supreme Court, the case would be dropped by acquitting John T. Scopes. It's a very interesting story. And if you would like to find out more about it, I highly recommend the book Scopes creation on trial by rm cornelius and john d morris um, it's a very interesting story and it will give you a lot of background insight into what actually occurred during the scopes trial thank you